Well, people, I gotta I gotta make a confession. The other day, I was actually taken out of my element. I mean, I, someone actually made me mad enough to be physical. I've been um, telling people, people around me, close around me lately, last years, to be nonviolent. I've been preaching nonviolence and a good guy and, you know, not the one to go there. And I went there yesterday. Friend comes over, 12 pack of Heineken, and the pizza, and we're sitting down, getting ready to talk about the game and everything. You know, let, first of all, let me do a backstory. This guy, he comes over, he's an old friend of the family, and um, that's pretty much it, he's just an old friend of the family. And um, I've known this guy at least, say at least 15, 20 years. So, you know, everything is cool, and when he comes over, he talks about the people he works with you know he's a union employee and um, they send him from job to job and you know he's only on a job for like you know maybe a couple of weeks or a month or two and then he's laid off well you've been in a union for 30 years so you 30 year man and all this and that shit when you're working it's the greatest job on earth and when you're not working, they're all against you and it's all political and stuff. Well, over at my house, I'm a realist. You know, and I studied the history of unions and why they even have unions, why the union was even created in the first place. I study these things for no apparent reason at all. And this is one of those guys that came over spouting that, you know, I go to work and all this and that stuff. And when he's not working, he's depressed. So, that's his story. He also bitches about his family a lot. But that's his business. Me, I try to leave that negative shit away. I don't work anymore because of certain people at job sites. And to be honest with you, it's because of people like him. That's why I don't work no more. People like that. They're all your friend and shit. And then... You know, outside the job site, oh, they don't know what they're doing. All these people here, they only here for the affirmative action. Oh, they got these uh, plans uh, so they help prisoners out of jail. They don't know what they're talking about. I mean, it's like, this is one of those friends of mine that I have to tell constantly, you're not as young as you used to be, and you're not the starting quarterback on the team no more. We can't live up to an image that we used to have, blah, 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 blah. Get over who you used to be and become who you are. That's what I tell this person, constantly. Person calls me in distress moments. When he's distressed, needs somebody to talk to, 1.30 in the morning, desperate because he's having an uh, anxiety attack. You don't want to go to the hospital. Shit like that. So, everybody knows my problem. Everybody knows my past. It's all here where you can see it. I have nothing to hide. Everybody know that. So, I'm not going to be that kind of hypocrite. If I'm going to call you a name, it's probably because I wore the label myself. Learn how to be before you can say somebody else is something. In other words, before I call you a name and make a statement about you, it's because I lived that life before and you're probably doing some old snakey shit. So, I keeps it real. That's the bottom line. You can't ask anybody to do anything no more than keeping it real. That's it. Nobody owe you nothing. As long as you tell the truth, what your version of the truth is, and stick to it, it's all good. Now fast forward. Me and this guy had a falling out because, once again, he's talking about how great the union is, 
and he's trying to make it look like, oh, it's great, it's great. He's trying to, to have the appearance that life is good in front of some people, some of my people, and I'm not the, the kind of person that I just let you sit there and, and bubble on some bullshit. I'm not gonna let you bullshit my people. So, you know, I pretty much shut this conversation down one time. Like, no, no, you just don't, don't talk like that. Because three o'clock in the morning when you're crying, have an anxiety attack because you're laid off again. I know how you really feel. So, it is what it is. This man also has a problem with people who are disabled. If you get a check, then he's a problem with you because you should be able to get off your ass and fucking work. People who get a check, it's a problem for him. He's got a problem with people who get checked because it's lazy asses not doing shit, living off people like him, it's hard tax to earn money, well you're really not paying taxes if you ain't working, right, if you get an unemployment check, you're really not paying taxes, right, you're only working three months a year and you're laid off because people know that you can't handle a fucking paycheck, right, everybody has problems, so, Dude comes over with pizzas and beer and everything. We're all laughing and, and joking. And um, now, boom, he starts rattling on about how great the union is. And he's talking about he's going to get a vacation check, right? Now, my buddy is like, you know, my vacation. He's like, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. See, as soon as I start talking, you guys want to cut me off. And this dude was about to say, you know, tell him about his vacation hour that he gets. I'm like, hey, man, he's just trying to tell you about how his vacation is structured. It's always when you come over with a six-pack or a 12-pack and then you think that you got the floor. You think you just uh, say whatever you want to say. I'm like, hey, dude, we're not going to talk about work. We're trying to relax and enjoy it, you know what I mean? Today, man, this guy just gets off work. He don't want to be sitting here talking about work. So this guy... Takes my company to the side and says, Oh, this guy's just gonna fucking interrupt me anyway. This is my house, dude. I don't wanna hear about the fucking union. Because I know exactly what it's gonna be like in two weeks when they lay this motherfucker off. I don't wanna hear you glorifying these fucking people that shit on you. Dude, talk about something else. I don't wanna hear about your sisters. I don't wanna hear about your life. Talk about some sports or something. Talk about anything else but the job. He turns and looks and says to me, say what the fuck I want to say. You can't say what the fuck you want to say to me in my house. You can't. You can't do that shit to me. Not in my house. And I slam that motherfucker. Blam. That's not me. That's, that's not me. That's not me. And I stopped myself from punching him in the face. And I ripped the motherfucker's shirt off his motherfucking back. The fuck out my motherfucking house. That bullshit. Say what the fuck you want to say. Where the fuck you want to say it. In my house. I was wrong. My buddy's like, hey, man, you fucking way out of line. Dude. And this is one of the people that, you know, I'm constantly telling. Keep your fucking emotions in check. Don't never let nobody fucking give you an excuse. And, you know, during the course of the day, there's a few things that made me want to snap. The buildup. Oh, I didn't tell you the story, he says. You know, I'm driving around, you know, and, you know, I already had a beer, and it's like three beers is my limit. And I'm driving home, and fucking cop pops out of nowhere. I don't know how I fucking got away. You know, I always keep my license in the trunk. I'm like, dude, why you give him an excuse? Why would you give a cop an excuse to 
put a bullet in your ass while you looking while you're looking for your shit in the trunk. That's just some dumb talking, dude. Tried to shut the conversation down right there. Tried to cut him down earlier when he made that statement. Whenever this guy comes over, it's all fucked with testosterone. I was gonna hit that motherfucker. I was gonna do this to that person. And last night I snapped. You ain't gonna talk to me anyway in my house. The way I hear you talk about other people. I slammed dude. Jacked him so hard. I was going to just light his face off. It's, it's wrong. All that I've studied and why people carry themselves a certain way. All that I try to teach young people and, and other people and white people and Mexicans and blacks, and Asians, and all the people. You can't let nobody make you hit them, or want to hit them. Don't let people down. I threw this guy to the ground, and I stopped myself. But I didn't stop myself from letting him know. Shut the fuck up about this goddamn union that you love so much. That keep fucking you over. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So then, motherfucker gets this shit together. Like, Man, can you give me a shirt? I found him a t-shirt. I snatched that shit up. Snatch that motherfucker the fuck up. Get the fuck up out of my shit. Get the fuck up out of fuck out of my shit. Snatch that motherfucker up. But but that's wrong. For years, years, I've dealt with this person with words, except one time. One time, I was having an emergency, emergency, a medical emergency, and I fainted. I completely just went out, crashed. And this person, the only person there. Finally come to, grab my chest and shit, hit my head pretty hard, and the motherfucker's laughing. I'm like, man, I've been sick lately, man. Whatever you do, don't tell anybody that I just dropped. Eighteen seconds after that, this motherfucker's on the phone. I lit that motherfucker up with a full can of beer. <laughs> Bow! Blew it, exploded in his chest. Don't ever talk about me to nobody. If I'm sick, you don't tell nobody I'm sick. Nobody needs to know what's up with me. Nobody. So there's a history. But there's no excuse. There's no excuse for putting your hands on nobody. I've dealt with this person talking bad about people with mental disabilities. They're just bullshitters. They're just dope fiends. No. There's some people out there who really got some real issues. And out of all the people this person should know, that people have issues. Everyone has issues. This motherfucker calls me on the phone. We need to meet in a neutral place. Oh. Because his MO is this. You talk a big fight. Somebody call you the fuck out. 
you call somebody else up and you want somebody to show up as backup. You want me to meet you somewhere so you can take your little knife and try to stab me in the Starbucks, mash me at a McDonald's, jump me at Jack in the Box? Not gonna happen. If you got a problem with me, come right back to where you got slammed and get some more at the front door. Or I put his whole business on blast. Because if anybody know me, they know people come to me. People come to me to tell me their problems. This man's problems give me fucking headaches now. Because 99.9.5% of his problems are nonsensical and rooted in family incest bullshit. Doctor, client confidentiality. But, since I'm not a certified doctor, I don't give a fuck anymore. Some of the sessions I used to have with people I know, I tape recorded them. When people have complete mental breakdowns and they're telling me I'm fucking insane, don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, I will tell you that I'm going to record your ass the next time you come over here talking crazy. So when you're talking like you got sense and talking down on people, I'm going to play it for you and put you back in proper perspective. I have several hours of some fucking serious bullshit gibberish from this cat. Some serious shit. So this guy calls me on the phone. He makes some weird statement like, just because your grandpa raped you up the ass when you was a baby. What? Grandfather never raped me, ever. Where the hell are you getting this story? Oh, it's one of his stories. His stories. It's one of his stories. Don't project your life onto mine. My grandfather never raped me. I was molested by some dude named Roy Tolliver. The world knows that shit. I give a fuck. Only a punk ass motherfucker hide the past. If you hide it, it'll fester in your soul. So, like Eminem said, that's the eight mile reference, folks. Say it before they do. You, know, you can't tell the story about me better than I can. So, this motherfucker make a statement like that. So now, I take his ass to cyberspace. Because that's the only place I know where to do it. I text some faulty shit. I texted a whole bunch of faulty, poisonous shit. The text don't go away. The shit you say to me on the phone, that might be there in a few years or whatever. As long as I don't say I'm going to fuck you up, I'm going to kill you, I told him I'll bust your ass again. I will flip you again. You will get slapped again. You will get suflex, nigga. It's the bottom line. But that's wrong. Just because somebody carry themselves a certain way and say some things that you may not like or even talk about some shit you don't want to hear. I kindly say we you talk about something else. Please, don't talk about that. But I had no business putting my hands on that dude. I had no business slamming dude down on the ground. His intentions was not to come over here and get pizza and beer and take over the floor. But yeah, I think that was it. You give somebody pizza and beer, they gotta let you say what the fuck they wanna say. And that's not how it go. My ex-wife spent a lot of money to have this house. And this little bullshit room in this space I get to be in. And all those foul things people can say about me. But violence is never one of those things that I cherish and, and I relish and I put it up on a pedestal. I don't brag about what the fuck I'm going to do, what the fuck I can do, how much I can do and how bad I is. It's nothing like that. There is no such thing as a bad man. Men do bad things. So there is no bad man. As long as a man is doing it, there's always a badder man. I don't know. 
but just because somebody gets on your nerves under your skin somebody lies it's not my business I know why the person is the way the person is I know how the person is wired I know what makes that person the way that person is I mean I mean I know his whole control function I had no business throwing that man to the ground the man is 50 years old man I could have hurt that dude I'm not saying I'm in the greatest shape of my life. I don't go around talking about fighting people or want to fight people. I don't live through aggression. And what hurts me is the young man telling me, man, all that fucking shit you talk, what the fuck are you doing? That hurt. That hurts to see somebody who I have slightly passed judgment on disappointed. In the eight years that person has known me, I ain't never did that. I ain't never reached out and grabbed somebody and threw them to the ground and just wanted to hurt somebody. That's not a part of my makeup. And I'm I'm not apologizing to this guy at all. I'm apologizing to all the people who have listened to me. I'm apologizing to all the people who, who thought that I was above that. And apparently... I need to reevaluate some things in myself. Maybe my studies have gone a little too far. Maybe I see people as subhuman. Like they used to see me. Maybe my narcissistic uh, mental state needs to be reevaluated. I'm not better than anybody. Um, I'm just as good as everybody. Um, I don't mean to hurt people. I don't mean for people to take my advice as the Bible. And literally, I was feeling so good and so positive. I was going to do a video called My Philosophy. For what? Why? Why would I be like that? Why would I talk all this Zen shit and become a raging fucking animal when a patient's fucking uh, ill afflictions boil over? When I'm tired of saying somebody pretend to be. When I know the truth. See, why I could... Why, why, why should I pretend to be a nice guy when I just want to jump on people when they get on my nerves? When I'm at the point where I don't want to slam somebody to the ground? What kind of person does that shit? The same people that disrespected me and called me names and forced me into hiding in this bunker outside of nowhere. The same people made me study their origin to find out who the fuck I am. Same people I vowed never to let ever let one of them get under my skin. The same people I was trying to show that who you have been taught you were supposed to be is a lie. What do I look like, man? Like the biggest lying sack of shit on the planet Earth. A liar, 
is a liar. Jerk is a jerk. And I tell people I am an asshole. I am an ass. But nobody deserves to get jumped on, man. Don't matter. Doesn't matter. I knew better. Then I preached a bigger man shit. <laughs> and I had no physical control of myself, man. I don't know if anybody ever seen the movie The Kingsman. I had no stopping myself from slamming that man to the ground. I stopped myself from punching him. I stopped myself from hitting him. But I could not not show him rage. I could not not show him violence. Because that's all I got from him. Whenever he talks about somebody else, what he wants to do to them. I had a friend over here the other day. And he literally jumped down my other friend's throat. Dude, you called me early that night. You called me late at night. I was going to kick his ass. Not at my house. Not here. Nobody is going to jump on nobody at my house. Why did I jump on that man? Is the testosterone kicking back in? I just get tired of people who talk. And then when other people are around, there's an image. I try to remain the same amongst whites, blacks, Latinos, Mexicans, Germans, Vietnamese. I'm the same around everyone. But different. I can speak fluently in Ebonic and in proper English. Broken Spanish and Spanglish. No African and no German. But I can understand some German because of all the Nazi videos I used to watch when I was a little kid. So, the moral of this story is this. In a perfect world, we can all believe that we're perfect. We all have that sense of, I am. And it's sometimes when you're a man, when your testosterone is infringed on, and you let it go for too long, you snap. I knew better than that. I am better than that. I cannot allow primal emotion to act. I cannot allow classism to act. I cannot allow snobism to kick in. But I just heard this person bash his mother, bash his sisters, bash his entire lineage, and to look at me and tell me I can say what the fuck I want to say when I fucking want to say it wherever I fucking want to say it not in my house
A lot of people say, man, you're right, man. You don't let nobody talk to you anyway in your house. You asked him not to, nicely to talk about something other than that. But that's how people who think they're better than other people act. I don't want to hear you, so I'll have you fucking shut the fuck up. I'm better than that. disappointed in myself and regardless of how life is because there was some fucked up text going on I fucked him up you don't threaten people you don't jump on people There's no room for that in the civilized world. And even the best of us can be had. Even the best of us can be made to go off at any time and just flip. It's pitiful. It's pitiful. So you lock yourself away in a box for six years because you don't want evil to get to you. You begin to talk to people through a camera around the world. You begin to spill your guts and tell people what's right and wrong through experience. And no matter what they've seen you go through, no matter how much growth or descent into madness they've seen you fall through you still take the time to look into that camera because when those people first start looking at you they start listening to you you said to yourself if I'm really crazy nobody would understand the damn thing I'm saying if this world has a place in it for me these people on the other side of this camera will help me find it. This camera has been a great release to a person who can't talk to real people anymore. Because when he speaks to real people, they change the way they think. Real people can't handle what I say sometimes. And for those other people who can handle what I say but just don't want to fucking hear it, problem with this world is what we won't talk about. The problem with this world is how we're divided with what we do talk about. The problem with this world is we don't talk about what needs to be talked about. And also the biggest thing I think is wrong with this world is people cannot live up to an image. You can never live up to an image that you set for yourself. You just end up letting yourself down. I told you a long time ago, I used to be a violent person. I used to jump at the the, 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 the time that I can find some danger. I used to yearn for the energy of a fight. Hit me! I used to beg people to hit me. I'm not like that. I despise violence. But yet and still, you just can't fight it. There's always something that'll push you, that'll poke you, and will peel that scab back. You can bury it, but when it comes back, it's hard. I hate it. I hate feeling like I'm gonna hurt somebody. And over the last couple of years, I've noticed starting to get angry. It's hard to deal with it. But the power has got to be there to hold it. Because if I can hold it this long, 
I can kill it. But sometimes you need that anchor. There's a reason why it's coming back. I don't like it. I don't want to have to use it. I don't need it. <laughs> what I was going to tell you folks is I'm scared. I'm scared I'm at the point towards I don't want to be in my cage anymore that I put myself in. And as soon as somebody on the other side of this cage snaps at me and I snap back, I'm afraid because I know the consequences. I know the consequences of anger. I studied it. And yes, it's true. You study mayhem, you study anger, you study aggression, you learn to quelch anger through philosophy, through peace, through common sense. You can't let anger and aggression defeats you. You find yourself hurting somebody that was a good friend. Now you make war with people and you get ready for battle. Now I gotta be aggressive. Because some people you just don't talk shit to. Some people get scared. And some people will do anything to defend themselves when they know that other person does have the power to stop their lives from being the way it is. The power to change their lives the worse. I have to be aggressive now. I have to look out for my family that walk the streets. The streets I don't walk on anymore. I have to come out my shell because I put my hands on somebody. The fuck am I supposed to do? Wither on the vine. Fade away. You just gotta get back in the game. You gotta get back in the game. Make it do what it do. You gotta bring yourself back. To what you used to be, but be better than what you used to be. You gotta get tall again. You gotta stretch. You gotta bring your muscles back to where they're supposed to be. You gotta get back on that swivel. You gotta watch your back. I'm not a big guy, I'm not a small guy, I'm a non-violent person, but if you push even the kindest person, they will dip your ass and put you on your head. Today's beer. Red tail. Got my scalar energy bracelet, pendant, whatever. 
it is what it is. I'd like to apologize to those people who thought I was above that. I apologize to the kids that should be watching my show, that do watch the show. And I'm just sorry. That is 40 minutes. And I've been tuned. 